There we go, got him. Nice. Boy, that thing was such a cat and mouse game. Boy, up here, Northern Manitoba, Clearwater Lake, Rocky Lake Resort. Tide doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's okay. He's right at the hole, though. I don't want to, got extra trebles on that tube. I don't want to uh, catch on the bottom of the ice there. There he goes. Oh, thank you. The assist, yeah, he came up flying. Man, they got so much fight, that's awesome. There we go. <laughs> There's two of them. I don't think he's very big. He loves the lake trout. There's, some, there's a, a lot of Cisco's and tubies in this lake too, so, and they will bite on some of the same stuff that we're, we're using. Target them for sure. Oh, oh yeah, yep, look at that guy. Hey, not a real giant, but look how beautiful those fish are. That is it. Look at the markings on that thing. That is cool. There's actually two fish down there. And they were aggressive. They were going crazy for this bit, chasing around. I was just started reeling up. And he came after it. The other one missed it. That's pretty cool, huh? All right, get back in there, buddy. All right. That was cool. Like I was saying, Jimmy and I are just jumping around from spot to spot. And you can typ typically get most of your fish probably the first 20 to 30 minutes at a spot and then we move to another spot where Jake is kind of sitting in a stationary area and he's chumming, that's another way to do it. You can sit there and chum, bring those fish in, have them come to you. We're, like I said, Jimmy and I are actually looking for them. We're finding the active fish and then we're move, moving on to the next spot. What I was saying, I was, when I first caught that, I wasn't sure it was a, if it was a lake chart or not because mixed in with these lake chart, what these lake chart are feeding on is our Cisco's and tubies and, and, and uh, other forage bases in the lake. Oh my goodness, he stopped it. He had, on the way up, he had, my line just stopped moving. Okay, there he is, I see him again. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. Oh, he bumped it. There's two down there. He had caught it falling. This is a heavy jig too. There we go, got him. Nice. He caught it uh, on the fall. I, I did, I did put a little chum down and that's, I really been thinking was bringing those fish in. Which is nice here in Manitoba, you can chum. Oh, I got him right at the hole here, that's going crazy. Let's see if we can't get him in first. Oh, he's coming in backwards. Oh, whoop, there we go. Not a huge laker, but. Nice fish and just destroyed that plastic. But like I was saying, up here in Manitoba, you can uh, chum. We've been putting down um, some cut bait in a couple of these holes and it's really bringing the fish in keeping around here because where we've been fishing it's kind of just a flat there's not a whole lot of structure and with that chum we're, we're kind of creating our own structure right we're keeping the fish here keeping them in this area keeping them interested and it's working so we're going to keep doing it oh here he comes there he is oh there's a good little pot of them in here this guy is not a biggie no but it is a lake trout, and you can't beat it for the weather right now. That's the nice thing coming up here at this time of the year because uh, you can have really pretty nice conditions and you still have really good ice, so you can navigate really easy. You don't have to deal with deep snow. This actually makes it relatively easy fishing. Come here, buddy. He's just a little whip, little whipper snapper. Where's, where's, where's Granny at? Come on, we'll get her back now. Down the depths. Boy, they're just beautiful. Oop, here comes one. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Got him. We got 30 pound braid with a 15 pound floral leader. Oh, come here, buddy. Let me get this guy out of here. He's not a real, real giant. Because those you get those really big ones, and it takes a while to get them into the even near the hole into the hole. But the, 
The biggest thing is it's a little bit of an issue because the ice is so deep it's just getting their head in the hole. You can see it's a little bit better. It's, it seems like it might be a six, eight pounder, I would think, based on his head beats. Come on, come on. <laughs> there he is, okay, there, oh, there he is. Oh, come here, buddy. Come here. Oh, come here. There we go. There we go. There we go. Ah, look at that. And they come a lot bigger than that model there. Boy, aren't they beautiful fish? They're just gorgeous. Boy, beautiful conditions out here today. Just gorgeous. Yeah, there we go. You know, one thing that's uh, actually fishing for the lake trout is sort of pretty specialized equipment. I'm actually fishing with this is a 42 inch uh, St. Croix Custom Ice uh, Apex Predator rod. Now this is a medium heavy, medium power rod. A stiff rod, but it's relatively parabolic. You see how it, it goes all the way down into the blank itself, the same sort of bend. It's relatively tapered a bend. And this is really dealt with for dealing with really pretty big fish because up here you can actually potentially catch like 35 and 40 pounders. I got the, uh, this is a Daiwa Laguna, 2500 size reel. A lot of people would say that's a pretty big reel for ice fishing, but you want a, quite a bit of line on there. And this is 30 pound braid, but I actually have a pretty uh, long shank, almost uh, 15 feet of uh, 15 pound invisible uh, fluorocarbon line. And then a barrel swivel. That's one thing that's really, uh, as you can see where that FG knot is at, but then I actually have a 15 feet of fluoro barrel swivel and then another fluorocarbon leader. And some of you may, may, would, may ask, well, why would I want that much fluorocarbon? Well, the thing is, this water is really clear and sometimes these fish can be pretty, uh, uh, pretty uh, spooky or in this, like a little bit more of my stealth rod for these fish. You know, if they're really active, it doesn't make any difference, but they can get uh, spooky at times. They actually, where even small profile baits can catch really big fish. One of the real mainstream baits is a tube. This is a five inch white uh, big bite tube. It's got a pretty heavy uh, head in there, anywhere from, you know, anywhere from a half to three quarter to a one ounce. Uh, you'll notice that I actually have a smaller minnow profile. That's a big bite slim minnow, a little bit larger five inch jerk, jerk minnow. And then I got a, a four inch uh, swim bait over here. This is a really good bait too. Uh, three ounce or an ounce and a half to three ounce crippled herring, Lure Jensen crippled, crippled herring. And then last but not least, a jigging wrap. One thing that you want to focus on and sometimes is actually is the weight of the bait and the drop speed of the bait, right? Like right here, I actually have a, a half ounce moon eye. Uh, but sometimes if the fish are inactive, a lot of times what I'd go down to is uh, light is like a quarter and you have a slower drop speed and it's dropping down when the fish are down on the bottom or, or more inactive. It seems like as they have bait feathers down on top of them, you'll have more to get an in inactive fish. But you got to experiment, you know, and, and it, the weird thing is at certain days, a real small profile bait could be really hot. At other days, you know, a five inch bait can be really hot. It just depends. You know, you do a lot of experimentation throughout the course of the day to let the fish tell you what they want to bite. It's time for a new spot. That's fun. <laughs> this is a serious activity. A very extension. The ice is relatively thick. But the key is one thing that's really critical when you're cutting with an extension, we actually have a 10 inch bid on here too, is to keep on clearing the hole because you don't want to get so, you get so much slush in there and when it'll sort of lock it up. So what I got to do is, you know, intermittently keep on really sort of clearing the hole out. Yeah. It'd be nice to be using an eight inch blade. The problem is their fish are so big here, you, you got to almost have a 10 inch auger. Here he comes. <laughs> that one came flying off the bottom. That's exactly why you want a really good reel and why you want a really long rod too. This is about a 40 inch. Oh, this one's got some weight. This is a 40, 40 inch tuned up and it's an LTP rod. And it's specific for lake trout. It's a lake, 
Lake Trout Precision Rod. Oh, he's right there. Right. Just, oh, a, just a nice just one. Just a nice one, but like I said, they they are tough. I mean, you saw that thing take the drag. Pretty, uh, they are all muscle. This is a smaller sized animal here. They come much, much bigger. Can you imagine having a 30, 40 pounder on? You saw that thing take rip drag. Those giants really know how to rip drag. Get them back in. That seems like a more of a serious guy there. Boy, that's what I mean. You want a really good drag for this. You know, right now it's such nice, beautiful conditions, but a lot of times when you're doing this, it can be really cold, you know, when it's midwinter, you know, and right now we're up here in the second week of the April. This is a big fish right here. A bigger, a bigger fish. But uh um, you want that drag's got to be really pretty, pretty smooth. I tell you that much. Well, maybe he's not that big. We get one of those really big ones. You'll know it because it takes like a seesaw battle. It's 15 minute, 10 to 15, 20 minute battle to land one of those big ones. Yeah, this guy's, he's coming back. He was just a, sort of tough at the be beginning of the trail here. Oh, there he is. Whoop. Whoop. There he is. Oh, there he is. He's not that big. Oh. Just a tough, beautiful fish, though. Look at that. Beautiful fish, though. Yeah. Had a pretty good day. We've been catching a lot of them, but we still haven't caught one of those real, bit, real big ones yet. Get her back in the drink. Come here. Come here, buddy. It's one thing about. You know, a lot of the guys up here, when they catch the really big ones, they just sit in a fixed position, you know what I mean, where they sit and they do a lot of chumming with uh, various types of uh, dead bait, cut up uh, tulabies and ciscos. And, you know, our theory is a lot of times to catch a lot of fish is more of this run and gun where you're covering a tremendous amount of water, you know, and it, the weird thing is, it's like we just pulled up here and it's almost like every spot, it's always the same way how you get a fish immediately. You know, you get the fish in the first, first number of drops. You know, there's a couple things you can do to kind of trigger these fish into striking. And one thing is really pound the bottom and then raise it up, you know, 10, maybe 15 feet really quick. Oh, even for not being big, he, he fights. Boy, they fight. Get the deucer out of the way here. I'm just below the hole, but yeah, just pound the bottom, bring it up really quick, and that'll usually trigger them into just chasing it up. And I just did that maybe five, six times, and uh, he came up and woofed it. Boy, you can't, <laughs> can't even see the jig. Look at that. I mean, I'm gonna have to do surgery to get that out. Yep, like that. Piece of cake. Oh. There we go. That beautiful fish, Clearwater Lake Lakers. We'd like to thank Dale and Teresa Forster at Rocky Point Resort for taking care of us during our stay. Give them a ring if you're interested in some of the incredible fishing opportunities Manitoba offers.